Hello everyone and welcome to Annalisa Dawn and this island game. Sorry about that. I give me a sec. Be back in a sec. Sorry, slight mistake. Hello everyone and welcome to Analyze of Dawn. I'm your host Dominic or Shadow Fury, whichever you prefer. And we have a pretty large replay today. So this is a request. A 6v7 on Storm Siege. I apologize in advance for not being able to completely keep track of all the things that are happening with all the players. With all the fact that the name... Why is the name tags not working? I would like to see name tags, but apparently that is not an option. Hmm, weird. Okay. Used to be a thing for, like, commander name tags, but uh, it's off. Okay, there we go. Commander name tags on! Hooray! Alright, so, as I was saying, we have game. We have game between seven players and six other players. Go over them as we go forward in the match proper. So, we from the top left, on the north team, we have Finnish Lime 506 going for the Air Factory. We have Smoke Dragon going for Cloaky Bots. Sanjus, sorry, what's the... Zanjus going for gunships. And Kabadasa going for heavy tanks. 400 going for heavy tanks as well, or tanks, I should say. Solar Water also going for tanks. And Genotonic going for gunships. So we do have an air player, even... So air player, gunship. Let's see, air, gunship, gunship, tank, 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 cloaky. Interesting mix. On the south side, we have Rui343 going... Who... who no, they didn't, I don't think they requested this. Anyway, one of the players here requested this, I... I... Oh wait, no, I don't, because the, the person requested it by email, so I had their real name, but not their username. Anyway, the... Where was I? So yeah, we have... Rui343 on spiders. We have Trellmick on gunships. Both of whom are doing a pretty good job right now, actually getting in a lot of scouting in the northern side. Same with Smoke Dragon and... Oh. Okay. Smoke Dragon and... Zanjus are up to... Or same with the... I'll just go to the north side. I'm naming off the players, but I'm going to be, like, not naming the players for a while. Because there's a lot of them. So, yeah, Travel going for gunships. Different Magic Shadow Cows going for tanks. But looks like they also got into a bit of a squad. Oh, no, they didn't know. They're just the seventh, they're just highest ranked players. So, Different Magic Shadow Cows going for tanks and shields. Vault Dweller... Or, no, Vault Dweller going for shields. Different Shadow Cows still has another factor they can drop. And shields as well for the final player, Mookie Man. Overall, a surprisingly ground-heavy build. I mean, the north side going for three different tank factories all in the same rough area of the map, too. You kind of expect, if you're going in a map in a match this big, you'd be spread out across the map some. But, nope. Nope, they're pretty much even. And, as we see already, south team getting a little bit of rating with some of the gunships. And managing to find some damage, but, of course, this is an early game, and early game 67. You're not really going to get a whole lot done as the defender's advantage for your opponent's Having, you know, six other players for whoever you're attacking is going to overtake whatever you happen to pull in for actual damage. Especially considering that the players in the back are doing a lot more to just build up the economy. Strife 40k. Oh yeah, Strife 40k. Forgot them. They are going for rovers and they are mostly setting up the economy. But yeah, as it stands, this is going to be a bit of defender's advantage heavy early opening because of course it is. Which might explain the use of the tanks coming in. Immediately we already have a bunch of ogres being sent out by the northern team. And I don't really see it doing a whole lot at this point. Again, it's just a matter of how much can how much territory can they maintain. Obviously, the teams want to get a little over half. Or realistically, want to get a little over half. Ideally, they get everything. But half is obviously going to be the point where things start to meet up. And likely, this section here is going to be fairly volatile. Though, for the time being, the south team has been very aggressive in taking the northern side... We see all, as it was, four players, or three players started out in the top ridge, as opposed to the south team, where really only two players did. And most of the players started quite forward, very quickly, aggressi aggressively moving forward. So the south team, as long as they can hold on to this, they're going to be in a reasonably good position. The Rui's commander, under a bit of fire, shouldn't ultimately be too threatened, but still, these banshees, these banshees, locusts, 
causing a bit of a stir. Overall, though, Sal team is still winning, or still a little bit of economic. Not quite winning, just ahead. But looking across the map, it doesn't appear that there's really a huge amount of things being built up for decisive anything. Just a matter of South team trying to hold on to what they have. North team with a few locusts here and there trying to take everything they can alongside some of the ogres. So far, though, it has been fairly even. The north side winning on energy being the one major thing. Genotonic doing a great job setting up a massive power field, which obviously they're going to be using for a lot of overdrive. But that's really going to come down to whether or not they're actually able to hold on to this, because ogres coming out from the Shadow House are just wiping out all the frontline economy, as you'd expect. Again, this is the key thing, and Dippin' Shadow House is doing a great job just holding that line, pushing it forward. The more they can do that, the better the South Team is. And right now, South Team already 20 medal per second ahead. Not huge when you're dealing with 130 medal total. But that advantage is ramping up. We already have really just getting their red backs and Venoms coming set up here. Th throwing off anything, trying to s stop all the building. Does get rid of one of the Wasps from Travel Mick. However, there's Weavers here. They're going to be reclaiming. They're nice to stand up the front line. Smoke Dragon's Commander is forced to retreat as a result of this. And that puts a little bit more pressure on the north side. That helps open up this western part of the map. Although Smoke Dragon is doing a fine job holding the line. They can only go so far and they are forced to retreat. Opening things up again for the south as the north side finally does start taking quite a bit of reclaim from the front lines. But ultimately it's only going to last so long. South side in a much more secure economic position overall. North side getting some gauss turrets up to try to hold as best they can. But it feels like it's almost too late. Like these ogres coming in here trying to get in but no nothing's gonna help them impalers are in place they are just stopping everything from moving forward beyond the midline though to be fair these two tanks Kabadasa's forces are just getting in on what were effectively naked expansion of the front line while at the same time smoke dragon is losing their own it does seem like the south side is not quite in as secure a position as they once were however this is still just getting back down to parity the south side over expanded a little bit but with vault dweller being up the front here and their commander that is still holding quite well. Now that the tanks are gone, plenty of workers are up here. They can start reclaiming. They can rebuild all these metal extractors, which is exactly what they're doing. And that'll jump up to about 160, 170 metal per second. So I don't see that being a main problem. <laughs> anyway, this is... Oh, I feel my chat... I feel my chat like... Sorry, someone's mentioning that in Twitch chat that I did not advertise the stream properly. But eh, whatever. But yeah, with, with this setup, Vault Dweller basically is the one keeping everything going. To some extent, that's also true of Travelmic. Rui with the nice red backs holding forward, but Travelmic is the one who I'm seeing as being the main force on the less, on this western side. And Vault Dweller, of course, holding the line as best they can on the eastern side, but it's having a... I mean, it's still... You know, the shields are being taken down. Minotaurs are coming in. They're breaking through. The tanks were a pretty good choice for the northern team to at least hold as best they can. But it may not matter. Smoke Dragon's Commander is being torn to pieces all these locusts just making it not able to really do anything and that is going to be smoke dragon's commander going down that'll open up the western side quite nicely doesn't really look like anyone else's commander is coming in to try to solve this prop try to solve this problem and no indeed there aren't so at this point just gradual a gradual shift forward for the south team able to push up as the northern side is just struggling very hard to even do anything from here the only thing I can see as being a possible saving grace, of course, is the fact that the commander up front has been gone. Vault Dweller's commander, that's not even a saving grace. Vault Dweller has just lost their commander. That massively opens up the eastern side. They were the only thing really holding the north team from taking the eastern side. So at this point, the north team, they have an okay time in the western side. Managed to get some revenants in there to hold the line. And very nice locust army to get basically back at Rui's commander. Just overall back at the south side for taking the western side. But even then, this in this northern bit, yes, the commander was destroyed, but there are more commanders coming in. I mean, Mookie Man's right there. Several forces are, or several impalers already still in place to at least hold it, so nothing can really advance forward. So it's not really that cut and dry. I mean, at the same time, there's still quite a lot being done to try to get rid of some of these air defenses to hold, to put, punch through in the western end, but... The South team does have a very secure expansion set, and they do have a little over half the map. So, they're in a very secure position, while on the other hand, the North side, I mean, they broke a major defensive line with the commander, but it's just simply not enough. There are too many forces coming in. The Revenants are the main hope, but again, there's a lot of anti-air that's already been built to prevent 
Anything like this really coming in and really wrecking South Team's day. The main problem for South Team right now is that they are a little bit... A little bit in a bad spot as far as actually pushing forward. Like, having lost that commander, having lost Vault Dwellers commander up in the front, doesn't do them any favors. Like, they can still push forward, they can still use some artillery here and there, which is exactly what they're doing. But actually managing to main hold the line against these emissaries and just generally push forward and set up anything. No, that's not going to happen. This is a no-man's land for now. This entire section here. But again, South, C South Team does have the advantage. They are ahead of no-man's land, but as we are getting into more of the trench warfare section, we have the artillery, we have the, the heavy defense. Actually, the heavy defense is not really on the northern side. This is actually fairly open. The emissaries are the main problem. Emissaries and Aryan, so it's not quite World War One. I mean, it's pretty close to, but not entirely. I mean, for one thing, no trenches. We could have them, but none right now. And for another thing, and I think more importantly, there's no rolling barrages or anyone digging through the ground. And as a Canadian, it's just not a World War One thing unless someone is using rolling artillery barrages to punch through, punch infantry through. But no, that's not happening. So no, can't call it. Actually, really, it's the anti is the main defense coming in here that's actually holding the line. I mean, to some extent, of course, it is the riot units, but mainly it's been these razors, which, granted, haven't fallen down, haven't fallen apart. The Trident's coming in to help deal with that, but even then, it's not quite enough, and that is meaning the western side is starting to fall a little bit to the northern aggression. Smoke Dragon doing a great job just holding that, pushing forward, losing a few units here and there, but it's paying off. At the same time, though, on the eastern front, there is going to be a lot of trouble, and the Impaler's not quite managing to get the emissaries, but. Getting close, and of course, as long as the Nimbus gets close enough to actually spot, that could still be a thing. Not to mention, I love this setup. The Nimbus coming in here, and just, it's, I mean, as a slight better spread than the Razor, so we're able to get in and actually deal with all the Razor's crap. But it may not be enough! And really, the Nimbus would have been nice to have spotting to make the Emissaries actually get hit. But that's not likely to happen. I mean, obviously, obviously the northern side does not, I mean, the southern side, rather, does not want to get too close. And at this point, I'm actually kind of surprised the southern side isn't setting up a bit of heavy weaponry. I, like, I mean, the Impalers are fine. They're doing an okay job, but it's becoming increasingly difficult to spot for them. The radar is just clearly not doing a good job. Not to mention, now with the Iris is in play, there's really no way other than directly running infantry through to get in. And like I said, I'm kind of surprised that there aren't any raiders or anything to actually get in. Just because not a whole lot of defenses have been set up. Not a whole lot of... And not a whole lot of anything really stopped Raiders. I mean, to be fair, the Catapult coming in here is... Or, not Catapult, Merlin coming in here is going to be a bit of a pain. The artillery game definitely getting in favor of the northern side. As the northern side... Again, they're starting to win the air game. Smoke Dragon in particular has been taking a lot into the western side of the map. And to the east, I mean, well, now you got a Merlin. And while there is a Cyclops coming in to try to deal with the Merlin, it's not going the right way, for one thing. And for another thing, it has to deal with the Revenants on top of having to deal with the Harpies, on top of having to deal with the fact that there's a Gauss Cannon right here in its way. Like, this is not a happy Cyclops. Not that I'm sure Cyclops can be happy if Greek mythology is anything to go by, but that is for certain not one of the happy ones. But again, with the artillery opening everything up, it does mean it's becoming increasingly difficult to actually... Or rather, it's increasingly difficult to set up defenses, so... I'm a little curious what's going to happen afterwards. I mean, we're seeing already Aryans coming in, trying to do what they can. Raptors, however, not doing enough. I mean, they're actually getting some damage in there, but getting heavily taken out in the process. It's just a matter of who gets the reclaim, and clearly it is the north side, and that that's really where they're starting to win this out. All these fights are happening in north side territory, so there's not a whole lot that the south side can really do to recover as they're losing units. They're effectively donating metal to the northern side. We're already seeing the north side has a 7,000 metal attrition advantage on top of the reclaim they're getting from all these corpses. On top of the fact that the Merlin is actually doing a really good job getting the land back. So the north side, they are really pulling it back. Like, very, very willing to pull it back. I'm actually kind of surprised how well that's working out, but it looks like that is still going to be, like I said, north side, holding on. Of course, what I'm curious about right now is the front line is going back and forth. Looking back at the base of the south side, setting up a singularity reactor. Very quickly managing to get some overdrive up, which I would expect we're going to see some shiny fairly soon. Like, it seems likely to me. 
that shinies are happening, or will soon be happening. I could be wrong, but it just seems like a thing, you know? There's a lot of energy. There's 400, 500 on the north side, 500 on the south side. North side setting up loads of fusion plants. South side getting that singularity reactor up, which will be up in a few seconds. It's another 300 metal or 300 energy into that grid, or 225 rather. But that's enough. That gets enough overdrive. That actually is putting them way ahead, 40 metal per second ahead of their opponents as a result of that. And with that, what is Strike 40k up to? Got this giant pit in the ground, and they're doing something with it. I don't know what it is, but it's something. Same time, though, that may not be enough. That is going to be Travel Mix Commander being taken down. That's the second commander on the left side of the map. Roy's is still a Roy's still, mind you, but the South team has just lost two commanders in total. Their economic power is okay. They kind of need Reekland to hold on. But the main problem is that they are losing territory. Slowly but surely, the Merlin is just pushing in and making it impossible for the South team to really hold on to any of their earlier gains. I mean, the western side, Rui is at least doing something to hold on, make sure the western side isn't being lost too hard. With Fleas coming in to try to make sure to find these phantoms, a good choice. I like it. This is what I wanted to see earlier to try to deal with all the cloaked units. But again, it may not be enough with this giant tank force. The Minotaurs and Ogre Ogres coming in here with no real resistance. I mean, effectively, all these expansions thus far have been naked. All the Air Force is the only thing left, and the Nimbus is trying everything they can, but the Ends are making it way difficult for the Nimbus to actually engage. Same time, Shield Ball coming in to try to stop this. The Thug Law is the only real hope. There are felons in here, but I do not see them doing a whole lot of damage. They're going to burn through this entire Shield Ball, and that is going to be a real problem. Thankfully, they do deal enough damage to the Ravagers, or sorry, to the Minotaurs, before the Minotaurs are completely able to wipe them out. So it's not, a, it's not a wash, but it's going to be a little while before the South team can push forward, even with the Shield Ball. And considering the damage the Merlins have been doing, wiping out any attempt to reclaim the front lines, there is no easy way the South team is getting back that reclaim. But again, they do have the Singularity Reactor. A second Singularity Reactor is being built up, both in these pits, because, I mean, you kind of want to keep it safe. At the same time, we do have a Chainsaw, or Artemis, rather, being built up. Or, was a Screamer before, wasn't it? We do have an Artemis being built up, which, I mean, that'll help a little bit with the Arianus, but really, it's not the Arianus the problem. The problem is this Merlin. That's been doing most of the damage. So the main thing I want to see right now is that Merlin actually getting in and dealing an appropriate amount of damage to all these units, because right now, I don't see that happening. I see the Merlin trying to do something, but not really sure what. So at this point, yeah, I don't really see it. The Merlin trying his best. There's, I mean, sorry, the Merlin doing a lot. The South team trying his best to deal with the Merlin. But the North team is just, they're just slowly but surely taking more and more of the map. Turn being used up to set up, try to get rid of some of the trench warfare bits over to the western side. And yeah, okay, that makes sense. I can see it. I mean, I think that it's going to be a little bit tricky to make work, just considering how hilly this is. I mean, the Trimmers, they rely a lot on splash damage, and when your opponents have built up all these defenses on raised platforms, the splash damage can only go so far. But that may be fine. Though at least it may be fine with the North Team's hand just coming in with the Crow, just to really troll the anti or line the Merlin to get in. Really, that's, that seems to be all it's doing is spotting for the Merlin. Maybe getting a bit of anti here and there, but its main purpose is just make sure the Merlin can hit things accurately. Our Merlins, plural. Second one has been built up. And actually, let's check the strider up right now. Third one is on the way. So the North team is just out artillerying the South team. The South team still setting up their Singularity Reactor, still trying to get, I guess, to a thousand energy. Not sure what they have planned beyond that, though. It doesn't feel like a whole lot. I mean, other than mass impalers, I don't really see much they have, and they don't have any spotters for the Mass Impalers either. There is no easy way the South team is going to be able to get back in this game. Their early economic leap, that has been completely wiped out, and their Impalers just simply aren't the right fit for how their opponents are progressing with cloaked units all over the place. I, a Merlin of their own would make more sense for the South team. And considering they have an economic advantage, it's probably not a bad idea. I mean, yes, there is an attrition advantage on the part of the North team by 10,000 metal, but... South team has been running a fairly large metal advantage for a fairly long time. I mean, the overdrive's advantage, they're not quite so strong when it comes to actual metal extractors, but all these western metal extractors for the northern team haven't been overdriven. So there is actually still room for the north team to get a stronger economy, but also room for the south team to get built up. But that's going to be increasingly difficult as more and more pylons are lost, more and more commanders are... not just a pylon being lost, but still, as the overdrive grid is being wiped out, as more and more metal extractors are lost, Holding on to even just the overdrive is still becoming prohibitively difficult. 
Zal team's still at about 200 metal per second, though, so they're not in a huge amount of trouble quite yet. Still, though, Crow coming in for the southern side, trying to even out those odds. On top of that, Artemis coming in, which, again, I guess the Crow makes sense. What does the northern side got to prepare against this, though? They have, well, again, their own singularity reactors. They've had already had advanced geos built up both sides. And they actually already have a singularity. Oh, they got another singularity in the north, but did not see that. But they don't really have a whole lot coming in for Antier. They have the Raptors, which those will be fine. But I guess the Crow, I'm not sure it'll do well enough. On the other hand, Proxy Dante coming in, showing that the northern side, they confidently have the center of the map. They don't even care. They have the center, they have all the metal extractors, they have a Strider Hub being built up. They don't see any real concern with stuff coming in and tearing it out. Now, to be fair, Smoke Dragon's side here is actually experiencing a bit of a hard stretch. I mean, it's being pushed back slowly but surely, though. I think that slowly part is the key. The fact that the western side is only falling slowly, while the eastern side for the north team is rapidly gaining ground. North team is still in a strong position. Rui is the only one really providing a huge amount of resistance. And the rest of the side, again, the commanders being lost up front was a major blow. And I realized that was 20 minutes ago, but it's still a major blow. Fortnite, however, losing their commander as well. Possibly a, a, a path to turn the tide, maybe. Or at least a start. Opening things up that little bit is never a bad idea. Though Capodessa's commander, also up front, also cloaked, also able to hold on. And more importantly, at this stage in the game, it doesn't matter as much to lose a commander because there's so many offensive units. There's so much protection for any workers that are in the front lines. And so many works in the front, or so many engineers in the front lines, that it doesn't matter. It only matters really at the beginning when the commander is your strongest and most well-defended part of your build power. And at this stage in the game, that is not the case. I mean, you got, what, 15 wasps here? On top of the crow, on top of the merlin, just pushing anything back so it doesn't even try to contest those wasps. The only, only the racketeers are managing to do anything, and even then the wasps are still doing plenty in the process. While at the same time, Wyvern coming in, wiping out the half of that shield ball. And at the same time, the western side of the map, while well, it's still no man's land, it's not doing much hotter. So overall, the only downside here right now is these wasps did end up flying into a bunch of rap a bunch of raptors and a bunch or sorry, harpies and a bunch of tridents, wiping out their entire numbers. As well as the crow, and more importantly, I'd say the crow was lost. But it was lost in Northside territory, so they can just have a field day reclaiming it. While at the same time, the crow has been should have been built for the south side. Where's the south side crow? Seriously, where's that south side crow? I am actually kind of confused. They, they had a crow. We're looking forward to that crow. I don't see the crow. Shoot. Hmm. Well, that being said, the Western side of the map definitely working out a little bit better. Again, Rui really, really pushing nicely here. Managing to put Smoke Dragon on the back foot, make them just have a little bit of a harder time holding on to this section here. And actually, that could lead to a flank coming in from from yep, Travel Namik helping out here. I mean, now these defenses are gone, there's not a whole lot behind them, so it's pretty much a clear shot to, to Smoke Dragon's base. And on top of the shield ball coming in, getting rid of that Dante. So the north side, while they do have a lot of damage on the table, it is actually kind of difficult to hold on to it. I mean, again, that one crow was, I thought, the main thing. But no, it's not. It's the shield balls. I mean, that being said, any Aryans are going to have a tough time. There's, what, 14 Raptors coming in here? 14 Raptors that are rapidly being destroyed, but getting rid of all the wasps in the process. Getting revenge for the killed wasps earlier on. Dying mostly in the process, but it was still a worthwhile revenge. And at the same time, the north side still is maintaining really strong control over the center of the map. And it looks like the south side is managing to get a little bit further east, but it's not clear. It's not a clear win. Punching through a bit of the defenses, getting rid of a couple metal extractors, but the north side is still running a massive advantage as far as attrition. Fairly large advantage in terms of metal per second. The main advantage here, though, is these ravagers just aren't being stopped. Getting rid of energy pylons, getting rid of metal extractors. The Merlin's only able to kill off about three of them. Four of them still getting into the main base, like right up into the main base. They're not going to be able to get the geothermal plant, sadly, for them, but they're going to be able to get everything else, and that's actually quite the surprise coming in here. I mean, these Raptors are, looks like their days are somewhat numbered. I mean, Harvey's coming in here, finishing them off alongside the Nimbuses. But even then, it's still quite a strong force coming in as the Nimbuses do finish them off, but that was a lot of, that was a lot less destroyed. A lot of metal extractors, a lot of 
pylons. Kind of broke through the eastern side of the map. Broke a bit of the spirit, I think, of the northern team. Maybe opening this up for the south, but again, the north team still has the Merlins. So, yeah, five Merlins compared to half a dozen Ravagers, or a dozen Ravagers, is still a bit of an uneven trade. It's not even a trade. This is an uneven position. And Rui's doing what they can on the western side to at least make up what was lost on the eastern side. It's just, I don't see it. I mean, they're trying for sure, and they're building up okay. But it's still a matter of what can be held on to. And again, the south side, they can't really take that what they broke in the north. The north's going to be taking it back immediately. So all I can see right now is the south side maybe escalating from here. They already have an anti-nuke just in case. Clearly a little bit suspicious of shinies coming at them. A suspicion I can understand, but which isn't actually being borne out. Both teams, in fact, going for anti-nukes. A little bit unsure of what the other one's planning on doing. Neither team going for anything particularly expensive, though. No nukes, no DRPs, no Zenithes. I mean, those are super endgame things. Usually you only see in FFA, but... In large team games, they do happen. But given how contested the center of the map is, I am not surprised. Both teams do have to make sure that they're holding on as well as possible. I do think the North team could hold the line just fine with the Merlins and move on to building up nukes themselves, like get a trinity of their own. But I don't really see that happening. There is, however, a Paladin being built up. Hard to tell how long it's going to last, though. Xander just says losing their commander has... Wow, where's the Atelier coming from? Is it Emissaries or what? Because that was, that was from a long way away. Well, either way, that is Xander's commander that was completely destroyed. That, oh wow, that even prompted them to leave. Sheesh. So far, a little bit more on their play to deal with, but that may not matter at this point, as the tank force again coming in, and again pushing back, doing what the Ravagers were trying to do for the South team, but the North team having much more success, again pushing in further, and all this time expanding behind it, setting defenses behind it. So these tanks are really, truly increasing the territory for the Northern team, while the Southern team, all they managed to do was break a few metal extractors temporarily. And you can only do so much with that. I mean, to be perfectly honest, it's not going to be all that effective when you break it down. Still, though, the tank assault being stalled a little bit sooner than it was the first time around. But again, the northern side, they've taken loads of metal extractors in the process. They've taken a huge chunk of the map. Rui has managed to at least make up for that slightly on the western side. But unless that turns into a flank, which it does appear to be, these Nimbuses over here in the top doing a fine job holding on. That's good. The question, of course, is whether or not Rui is able to hold on to this eastern side or the western side, and the Merlins want to make that no. That is the that is the thing. Like if Merlins are right, then yeah, it's going to be a problem. But if the Merlins are wrong, then that could be the South team taking him. I mean, Katabasa already losing a lot of faith in their abilities to succeed. And to be fair, the South side, that Western approach does look pretty scary. If you look at the way that it could possibly come in as a flank side, like this is kind of the edge of North side territory. And that's actually kind of becoming scary. Despite how much North side has taken the Eastern end, the defender's advantage is definitely stronger over here on the Eastern side than it is over the West. And we have, oh, guys, the big birth that was... Where's the Big Bertha? Big Bertha! That what was doing. Okay, cool. Oh, wow, that is... Yeah, okay, fair enough. Get the right spotting for that. That will kill a commander. So, we do have some heavy duty artillery on the part of south side. North side getting up a funnel web to try to at least build up quickly, push forward, reclaim a ton. And they need to. Like, south side, the fact that Ruri has managed to hold on to this edge and keep pushing it and pushing it and pushing it, despite all the Merlins, has been the real reason South Team's been in this game. North side took so much on the eastern side of the map in the low ground that it seemed like South side was going to have no way back, but the fact is, South side held on to the west, held on to the high ground, and, well, they had the high ground, and they're making great use of it. And it looks like another commander dropped, too. Oh, no, it's not another commander. It's just, that's just what the... Merlins do when they die, but still, actually, Merlins dying is also a very big deal. Merlins dying, it's still seven of them, but everyone that goes down is another opening for the South Team to come in, and this Shield Ball is really showing how effective that can be. Shield Ball wiping out basically all the frontline defenses, getting rid of some of the Irises, getting rid of a bunch of the Pylons, threatening the Commanders, threatening the Striders. Not a whole lot is being done to, not a lot is succeeding in stopping this, but of course, the Shield Ball is running out of shields. It is having a hard time holding its own, forced to retreat, but if it can retreat and keep this going, it still will be fine. The north side will have a lot of reclaim to work with, but it lost a couple Merlins, lost some Dantes, and that shield ball 
I think... Yeah, well, it made cost, actually. The south side, already, they're getting their attrition numbers really even as a result. That was a very strong push on their part. Opening up that middle, cracking open what was seemingly an impenetrable wall from the northern side. And again, reopening the access to the center. I mean, now at this point, we're looking at this kind of line here. So it went from this... Oops, Went from this kind of line, I should probably go something that's not moving. Went from this kind of line to this kind of line. Yeah, the south side is gradually taking territory. Really, at this point, 400 is the main player on the north team actually pushing at all and not finding any success. And that may be short lived. They're pushing really hard. Theoretically, the southern team could come in from the east, it could come in from here and then just push in, wiping out everything. So I'm not super confident that the northern team is going to be able to hold the line unless they're able to either stop Rui or retake what's in the center. 400 can can swing back into the center, grab this line. They might be... The North team should be able to hold on a little bit longer. But honestly, it's hard to say. And yeah, it's fair enough. I mean, how many Berthas are... There's just the one? There's just the one. There's only one Bertha. But that is fair. Bertha is definitely doing a good job here. And the North side doesn't really have anything. They have... Oh, never mind. They have a silo. So the nuke silo coming in here... Okay, that's... That'll be handy. A little curious where it's actually firing. It looks like firing straight at Rui's commander. Taking it out and possibly opening up the western side. But Rui's commander wasn't the only asset Rui had there. It was a strong one. It was definitely one that was doing a lot of construction. But as I mentioned earlier, destroying commanders at this stage in the game is not the most effective strategy. It's not bad. But there's a lot of other workers that are going to be, or a lot of other constructors that are going to be in the area that can easily start setting up. So it's not like they can't just come in. Okay, I say that and I click on regular. Actually, where are the constructors? Okay, well, they can have constructors here. They do have wasps here. Those will at least do something, but it may not be enough. The Dante, however, is coming in here. Doesn't quite manage to take out the funnel web. Does do a fair bit of damage on top of that, but it's still. That funnel web was a huge deal there. Not gone. But that is still an opening for the for the Bertha, which knows it. It's going in. So where's the Bertha targeting? Oh, it's targeting the metal strata, targeting the roughly where the Merlin is. I mean, the funnel of more a problem for the amount of build power it has and the reclaim potential. But if if Rui can hold, if Rui and the Cows can hold the line, then it shouldn't be a big problem. I mean, the north side has basically lost the high ground. So, right now, it's just a matter of whether or not they can hold on the north ground, or the, the low ground over the east, and the northern high ground as well. If they lose that, they're done. But, yeah, they can hold on to the rest of it, then it works out all right. But that is still a really big question. Still, though, Rulers and their commander clearly causing some problems. I mean, as we can see already, it's not so hard for solar water to get in here. Scorpion's coming in. Starting to take out a lot of the stuff that had been built up. There isn't really anything to hold on. And nothing was built up in the process. The lack of a commander... There weren't any other constructors to make up for the lack of a commander. So this area was not defended. Like, as the attacks was happening, as Rui was taking out Smoke Dragon's base, nothing was being done in behind to hold the line. Which is one of the things I think the North team is doing far better than the South team. Is the North team, whenever they attack, they expand behind us. So there's only in No Man's Land of about two or three mechs wide. But there's like... Five mexes worth of no man's land here because nothing. I mean, it could have been two, but there's five empty mexes in a row just because nothing was built in between. And that's the biggest problem for the South team right now is that they're not building up as they're going forward. So they're taking ground when they really, really have it, but it's hard to really, really have it while the North team keeps taking ground whenever they sort of have it and they're still getting a lot of value out of that. Yeah, they're losing the metal extractors later, but if those metal extractors are up for 30 seconds, they pay for themselves. And the North team able to also turn that into a bunch of territory. And the only downside of that right now is, of course, that the West, the South team kind of has its Western side. But really, the main problem right now is that Bertha. If that Bertha can be taken out, if, like, just... I mean, Wolverine's not going to be able to come in thanks to this... Thanks to the Artemis's... I mean, eh, okay, 21 missiles each. Yeah, that's going to be a problem for any air trying to come in. But, if, yeah, if there's something you can send in, like, even just... I don't know, an ultimatum come in there, get rid of the Bertha. That would crack things wide open. And even without that, I mean, the Scorpion's coming in here, taking out everything Rui's built up, wiping out all these expansions, wiping out all the anti-air, just... And once that's gone, it's gone. And yeah, okay, the Artemises are doing a fine job getting rid of any Wyverns that come in, but the Wyverns are still taking out a lot in the process. It's all suicide attacks, but if it's worth it, it's worth it. 
And again, the Merlins maintaining that artillery approach. The Birth is causing problems for their numbers, but the Birth is also distracted, trying to get rid of gunship plants, trying to get rid of paladins, trying to get rid of things that are in the back lines. Which I can understand, but those aren't the Merlins. Those aren't the things that are actually holding the line forward, which I mean, there's only four of them left. It's not like getting rid of them would be a particularly difficult task. It's just that they aren't being targeted. They're not the focus. I think if they were, that would make it a lot easier for the South Side to actually push forward and wipe out everything. Because again, South Side does frequently have an economic advantage. Not right now, but they do frequently have that. But it's a matter of whether or not they can hold on to it. And the answer is maybe, but it's... Right now, not looking too promising. The fact that nothing is coming up to build up over the north side, or over the west side high ground, means that there's nothing really the south side has been doing to actually take that. So all the damage dealt didn't do much, but on the other hand, the north side, they have loads of reclaiming they're working with, loads of reclaiming, all these Merlins that are dead, just turning into more and more metal, turning into their more and more of their own assets. I don't really see a problem here. Like, this, this is still working out fine for them. And again, more missiles coming down here. Looks like... Okay, just AO strike your the fleas. Actually, not that effective. Should have been an Inferno. Fleas doing a really good job here getting rid of the Scorpion. So that is Scorpion Gun for Gene Tonic. Really helping out as far as actually cleaning up this western side of the map. But again, stuff needs to be built behind it. There needs to be the builders. The Strider Hub is here, but it's not nearly enough. An ultimatum is coming up, but again, that's only going to be useful for breaking things, not for building things, which you need to do in order to take this game. However, this is still... Oh. <laughs> okay, people in Twitch chat pointing out that, yeah, the Lobster Squad games are kind of similar. Yeah, they are, but they are different from 1v1s, which is why I do them every once in a while when people request them. And that's every once in a while. Like, I'm not going to be doing another one for a little while. This is... Just got a request, and it's like, okay, sure, why not? But, yeah, these are exclusively by request, and let's say once a month or two at most. Like, not something I want to do super frequently. But I haven't done one in a long time, so it's fine. Ooh. Fun Love's still having a hard time holding the shields, but... Yeah, again, the north side... So this is what I mean, the Fun Love's kind of holding it, no problem, but that's not really the focus. The south side's focusing on these giant units, and the north side is going, well, we have these tiny units that can come in and build up, and then... A bunch of workers on top that they can build up metal striders as we go. So let's just go for it. While we're reclaiming all of these striders we lost, allowing us to build a detriment. Because why not? I mean, it's going to be 15 minutes, but why not? Or no, never mind. There we go. That's a better time. Three or four minutes from the north side. With all that reclaim. So turning basically all those Merlins into a detriment. Now, whether or not that actually ultimately works remains to be seen. There's a lot of anti-heavy units being built up in the ultimatums up. There's loads and loads and loads of, mer of impalers. There's enough forces overall that it's not super easy to send in a heavy unit, but a detriment is still a detriment. That is still a lot to work with. Even with the Bertha coming in here, that's not going to be able to snipe it too easily. And it's not even going for it anyway. I don't know what it's going for at this point. I guess factories? I guess factories. Sure. Oh, and a Lucifer as well, just to be on the safe side. Again, this is exactly what I mean. The northern side is building up. They have pylons. They're getting metal extractors. They're reclaiming a bunch. This is something that really was not doing at all when they were holding up the south side. Northern the south side really was setting up as they were going. And that's made it really easy for the north side to take this back. The south side had this great advantage on the western side of the map. And the north side just... They pushed it over. They wiped out the, the commander. And then everything else just fallen like dominoes. Which, again, really shouldn't happen at this stage in the game. But if you haven't gotten an infrastructure built up behind your attacks, that is exactly what is going to happen. And what happened? That's exactly what happened. So, no real surprises there. And overall, it's just proving to be a real challenge, especially with all the folks coming in here, for the South team to actually push back to the northern side. Like, the South team had this really good opportunity early on, or about 20 minutes ago. They took advantage of it, they took a lot of the map, but they've lost a lot of the map in the process, and nothing is really made up for that, which is a real shame. Like, right now, the only thing I can think of that South Team could do is, I don't know, escalate further, I suppose. But what can they build? And they have anti up because I'm not sure. They have a Crow up as well. But the Crow is going to walk right into a whole fleet of anti-air, a whole squad of Raptors. Not really going to make it have an easy time. I mean, the Funnel Web is not doing too badly either. It's defending against the Birth of Nellis. 
shield is minimal pad. Oh, wow. Okay. That's why. So, yeah, there's not really a whole lot here. And the ultimatum also going down. Wow. Wow. Ultimatum getting taken out by the Lucifer. That's gotta hurt. Not even sure what decloaked it, but whatever it was, yeah, got rid of it pretty fast. And again, the Lucifer coming in here, making that a real problem. On top of all the shields, it's not really carrying the funnel up. Just now losing on their shields. But for some reason, the Crow not going for the Lucifer with all that damage, or the funnel up with all the damage? No, going instead of the Merlin. I mean, I, I get that kind of in theory, but you have the Lucifer that's destroying anything you send in. And the funnel up building everything up. At least the funnel up is now down. But that Lucifer is not going to go down. The Crow will not survive. It's going to fall back. But the Lucifer helping get rid of it. I mean, at the very least, helping to force it to retreat, if nothing else. But at the same time, the Eastern side of the map is continuing to push forward. More and more attacks coming in there, and Mookie Man losing their commander in the process. I think at this point, there's only like two commanders left on the south side, where the north side has only lost two. This is still working out fairly well. But again, we're actually seeing the north side, they've lost a lot of the constructors, and as a result, they are running into the exact problems we saw the south side run into. Namely, that they're not able to continue to build up and push forward. And that's actually really good for the south team. They give the south team an opening on the western side, again, breaking things open. Now, if the south team does build up behind it, they have the wasps, get some reclaim, get some destruction, get like all these, all these metal extractors, all these thousands, tens of thousands of metal of reclaim, get that up and you'll be fine. Same time, though, the bird that has still done a pretty good job getting rid of some of these frontal factors. So it's actually been quite effective. Oh, wow, even just, not even just the Bertha. Really, it's just Redback and Hermit with no other defenses coming in here, able to just wipe everything out. The main threat they have actually is from the Bertha. But hey, you know what I was talking about earlier, but rolling barrages, that's kind of what we're seeing here. So I'll take it. Ooh, four Eoses completely missing, going for those spiders. Unfortunately, the only real defenses they have, unfortunately. But that's the thing, is the South team... Ooh, nah, that's not how rolling barrage works! You don't hit the infantry, you hit in front of the infantry, allowing the infantry to go in, under cover of all the smoke! That's how it works! Ah. Well. Regardless of how much you just shamed Canadian military history, that is still a very effective assault. I mean, this western side is basically broken wide open. Units can be walked straight in. There's no defenses. There's nothing here. The thing is, that's sort of the thing when you when it comes to... Heck, that's gonna happen. Okay, that was weird. But that's the thing when it comes to how these things work, how all these defenses work, is that you don't have a whole lot to work with in the back lines, usually, because you're not expecting your opponents to get in there. You're expecting your opponents to just crash themselves on the front door. And that's not what's happened. They pushed through, at least in the western end. Eastern end again, 400 is pushing back, but at the same time, there was a layered set of defenses for the southern team, and that's helped out a lot, along with the birth of really just stealing the game on its own. Oh, what? Danny Ren, if you don't take 10% casualties from your creeping garage, your troops are too far behind it. Wow, that's dark. I mean, no, that's still pretty dark. I'm not sure. I would be very surprised. I'd have to double check that if those numbers are accurate. Somehow, I wouldn't be surprised if they were. Regardless, though, the creeping barrage is doing its job as these spiders coming in here, pushing forward. Not a whole lot of threats. The scorpion really being the only problem going forward. And I believe that is outside of the Bertha range. I'm not entirely sure. But I think. Yes, it is. Just barely. But it doesn't even matter. The scorpion... Well, actually, wait. That was... That was the Machado Kalos' scorpion. My bad. That was... That was the South Team scorpion. South Team scorpion finding loads and loads of value. I mean, that singularity reactor, if it goes down, is going to basically be wiping out the entire side. I think that... I don't think it's going to leave the surrender right out, but it will help for sure. That singularity reactor is the last thing. It is... Oh, is it going to go down? Yes, it does go down. There's the shiny from the Singu dying. There's the entire base being wiped out in the process, and North Side thinking, oh, shoot, we need to resign. Front it over, a little bit more confidence, setting up some units to defend to at least hold back, because all these units that got into the back lines did die in the Singularity Reactor explosion. Now, granted, the North Side is way behind in terms of economy. They have half the economy in the South Side, so I don't see it, but 
this still might work in theory. It's tough to say how well it will work in practice, but, you know, it's sort of the option. Same time, the detriment has been built up, does have a funnel behind it to help shield it. And the detriment moving forward, that is the real Hail Mary pass here. The northern side, that's all they've got. And despite all the shots coming in here, is doing a, a bang-up job just walking through here. Nothing really stopping it, but of course, it is a detriment. It is 80,000 or 20,000 metal. It's expensive for a reason. Paler's trying to come in to deal with it, not quite managing. Every one of them just hitting slightly behind. Same time, though, Paladin has already been built up at the south side. So at least there's something the south side has close to its level. But it may not be enough. And again, I kind of should see... Why are you not firing missiles at... Like, firing the missiles at its feet in front of it. Not working. Nope, it's not working. Still, the detriment at half HP as it gets closer and closer. But that's all it needs. If it can close in, it will still be fine. I mean, the disarm isn't even managing to deal enough damage to cause any real threat. That detriment should be able to at everything. That's one of the... One of the artists is gone. The second one should be falling soon afterwards. It's just behind it. There's three in total, though. All three need to go down if there's going to be any hope of getting air forces in here to actually deal any damage. But that might still happen. One more. One more to go. Artemis is are almost completely wiped out. The Strikerp is getting taken down. The detriment, however, has been disarmed. Paladin was close to get the disarm. The stun is very nearly up full, too. Uh, and that actually is going to fall down. The detriment does die, however, in the middle of the base, wiping out the rest of the anti-air, taking on the entire frontline construction set, and opening everything up for the northern side. 400, they might not have the resources to deal with this, though. At the same time, we did have a massive second assault over the western side of the map. The air factory was still alive, allowing for a lot of rebuilding to happen, but most of the rebuilding is coming in from 400, as another detriment is being constructed on top of that last one. But again, the south side, now they have all this reclaim. They have 8,000 metal of reclaim. That is... That is the thing. So, I don't know. This is... This is still the north side possibly having an opening. But again, the south side retaliating just fine. If the reclaim starts being taken, then the south side is going to have an easy enough time building up counter measures. Possibly setting up detriment of their own, but they aren't really building for that. They're building more for anti-air, they're building more for fences, building their artillery up, which... Granted, is still up. Not that big Bertha is still going. Nothing much stopping it quite yet. So, yeah, there's still a big Bertha. Still a lot of damage to be dealt. Still a lot to push through. But the northern side, having lost a lot in the back lines, being forced to recover. The south side, unfortunately, I think that Dutchman is the one thing that's keeping the northern side in this game. The fact that the south side has to now rebuild, can't really push forward. Paladin is trying to do what it can to at least cause some damage, but still not really enough against both Paladin and a Lucifer. So even with that, it's just not really an option. Still though, Paladin actually, well, two Paladins here are doing a fine job getting rid of the Lucifer, getting rid of a lot of the front forces. I mean, okay, the Lucifer now having most of its reclaim destroyed, but it's not really the key thing here. The key thing, of course, is to get rid of everything in the back and to get rid of all the production. Actually, to get rid of the detriment would be great for them, but I don't see it happening. I mean, oh, but that Bertha actually does have range. It could, and it is going for it. It's, the welder's not quite hitting the welders well enough. But the shots are firing in the their direction. Sooner or later, it will get lucky and not hit this terraform, which is well-placed. But yeah, sooner or later, that will get lucky. We'll hit the builders. But at the same time, over in the western side of the map, it's still a major problem. Ooh, side screaming. I like that. Doing decent job holding on to the west, but again the south side, they have built up the infrastructure now this time around, they didn't make the same mistake as last time, this north high ground or western high ground has been built up, that actually is a great staging ground to take the center of the map as well, pushing 400 just to that eastern corner, eastern edge on their side of the map and having lost their Lucifer and very likely soon to lose their Paladin this is still pretty unstable for 400 still a tight spot, the detriment being the one real hope which, admittedly, is having to deal with these terraform walls. And the terraform walls are well positioned to deal with it. Oh, not quite though. What is that thing aiming at, anyway? Like, what is its actual target? No, I don't see it. Okay, we're weird. Why are you trying to target? Come on. I want to see where you're targeting. 
Eh, whatever. No matter what, the South team still has that position advantage. But the North team... Okay, South team, why are you not reclaiming? There's 8,000 metal worth here. You've reclaimed 700 of it. Like, seriously, you have so much reclaim you could work with, and you aren't taking it, and I don't understand why. Please, just take the reclaim. Ah. All right, well, at any rate... Ooh, okay, you're in the Antinuke. Okay, so if they're getting the Antinuke, does that mean they're planning on building Shiny? Because I don't see any Trinities being built up by the Southern team, or the Northern team. I mean, this map, clearly not really a map you'd have Trinities on, just because it's such a small map, it's easy to have anti-nuke coverage. Like, all the anti-nukes, one anti-nuke covers left to right. So, it's fairly easy to avoid getting nukes. So I don't expect we're seeing Trinities. But then again, the anti-nukes go down, we might. Yeah, same thing as Dante. Trying to hold the western or trying to take back the western side, but again, the main problem here is just infrastructure. Like this is still the south side having the advantage because they have the infrastructure right here as a staging ground. The sides, okay, they did a decent job pushing in and dealing some damage, but the rebuilding should be happening any second now. In fact, it should be happening now. Why are these weavers not doing it? I don't know, but that should be happening right now. Same time, the detriment is up. Second detriment up, third detriment on the way. Last hope for the northern side, and not a whole lot in the way to help deal with that. However, this time there's no funnel web. There's no funnel web protecting it. There's no... The Bertha is not shooting at it, though. I don't think they're even aware it exists yet. No, they're not aware it exists yet. It is cloaked. Wait, does this just have cloak? No, it doesn't. It's just a nearby iris. Never mind. Or cornea, rather. That's fair. Actually, that's really good. That detriment's gonna be able to get in there, and nothing can stop it. I mean, there's nothing that knows there to stop it. I mean, Lucifer's being built up, but there's no grid up to them either, so this is not great for the southern team. That detriment does get spotted relatively quickly, but the question is, does that Bertha get in here? Does it actually hit it to deal the damage? The, at least the Impalers are... No, the Impalers aren't even doing anything at this point! Again, those missiles are missing every single one of them, just flying straight past the detriment because it's moving that little bit too fast they're not leading the shots. Of course, the detriment does retreat. It does start taking some damage, but still, it has 80,000 HP. It doesn't have anything to worry about as far as damage when it comes to the unit like Impalers, even when you have two dozen of them. However, Southside is actually reclaiming that detriment, which is, which is good. It's a good start. Not trying to artillery out the detriment, though. Instead, trying to artillery out something over here. Not sure. Okay, there's something being built up there. Like, seriously, focus on the detriment. That's the main threat. If that detriment gets to the base, it's over. Like, South, South, South Team will have lost if the detriment gets that far. I mean, yeah, the western side is solid. They've got it. Just need to push forward and can probably sweep from, the, from here. Probably sweep from here all the way down here. But that's not going to happen or not going to matter if the detriment does survive. And the detriment's... Just for the back that have HP. The Paladin's actually doing a pretty good job holding the line. Though one of them has gone down. Second one's still up. Still managing to get its damage in there. However, it's proving to be quite the challenge. Actually, to be fair, no, the Detriment isn't actually focused on the Paladin. The Detriment is forced to retreat. It's at quarter HP. It's not going to be able to do anything. That Detriment's complete waste. Being forced back in the cloak, but at the same time, the spiders coming from Rui able to take out that entire detriment production facility. So there's no way another detriment's gonna be built up in a reasonable amount of time. In fact, I don't think another detriment's gonna be built up. This is basically it. The detriments were the main asset the North team had to actually do any damage. And with all these forces coming in here, all these redbacks and thugs, or redbacks and hermits rather, they shouldn't be able to wipe out everything. There is nothing stopping them. This detriment cannot be completed. That second detriment, the detriment that's up front just getting torn apart, forced back, forced to repair. Not really a whole lot I can do to repair either. It does not heal that quickly. And it's so much HP that repairing it is prohibitively expensive. So at this point, Southside has wiped out the main problem they're facing. All they need to do is get rid of these commanders, and that's no problem at all. An upgraded commander, no issue. Get rid of the factories, get rid of everything built up in the back. I mean, the Redback's doing no, they're doing everything they can to deal with it. Genotonic, trying to make up for the lack of detriment, but it's still 10 minutes away there's no way it's going to be built up in time, and despite all the size, just too many units able to deal with this. I mean, the Hermits do not care. They do not take enough damage from size to be threatened by them, and they hit them just fine. They fire frequently enough. It's no big deal. At the same time, 400 basically losing all the factors that they've been gifted over the course of this game, and their commander. 
as the north side base is being wiped out completely, and I don't see any way out of this. So a lot of this honestly just came down to the fact that the south side, they were able to take this western section, they were able to deal a lot of damage, never really lose much in the way of proper damage. But at the same time, the north side, they lost the west, they kind of held on reasonably well, they weren't able to hold on to the center, especially while well. losing that western high ground meant that it was easy enough for the south team to just push in from there, start really securing the center, and there was nothing much that could be done other than maybe getting the detriment in close enough to actually deal the damage needed to wipe out the rest of the base, but even that first detriment, it needed to win the game, and it didn't. Now, the detriment Cyclops combo isn't a bad one, but again, considering that at the same time, everything in the back line is being wiped out by the northern for the northern team, I don't see how much help a base trade is going to be at this stage of the game in a in a 7v6 when you're when it's 300 metal to 80. Like for the first time this entire game, North team is down to double digit metal, which for a for a cluster game like this is not gonna happen. For a lobster pot, triple digit is standard. And this detriment is I don't know, it's actually not going down that fast. It is still a threat. I mean that first detriment getting finished up, getting continued to be cleaned up. All the same time, a lot of damage being dealt over to the north, but no, no killing blow. Nothing that's actually finishing up the north side. It looks like clearly 400 has focused a lot more of their efforts forward in the center of the map. But it may not matter. The detriment goes down again, not even managing to deal that much damage. Getting rid of a couple of frontline factories, but the Bertha is still alive. And again, the Bertha is actually the biggest asset. Again, the MVP right there is the Bertha. And that was, that was really it. That, that decided the game outright. A big Bertha having a big impact. And the north side realizing there's not a whole lot they can do from this point on. I mean, these thugs are completely uncontested. Uh, the only thing that's going to stop the thugs is them being careless, wiping out these fusion reactors. And no, I don't see that happening. She should get a chain reaction in just a second. There we go. There's the chain reaction. There's the diffusion reactors. And all the her hermits are alive. And yeah, not much else is left. I mean, really, 400 kind of the solar water, gin and tonic. Okay, finish line is still up too. Finish line, kind of just trying to rebuild as best they can. Building up a zenith, hoping for the best, hoping against hoping they can actually get that up in time. Which no, they can't. There's a scorpion in their base. It's it's over. But you know, I like that. That's good spirit. Still though, it is yeah, it is over. As Ronda is pointing out, like we are done here. There's nothing we can do. The singularity is gone. Most of that base is gone. There's, yeah, Zit, 400 Katabasa, and, oh no, Solar Water's left. Finished Water's still alive. Still staying in this. Surprisingly enough, they're, they figure, well, I can get rid of the Scorpion, continue building up that Zenith. And no, they can't. Scorpion just barely coming in here. Oh, the Gauster is going to stop it from getting rid of that Dante. Oof, but it may not matter. I mean, it doesn't matter. In fact, Finish Lime is the only one really here with units left. So, with that, yeah, this is north side being just finished up. Finished water, I think, I think they're just desperately thinking if they can last for 15 minutes, get the zenith up, there's a chance. But no, even if the zenith got up, it would take a while to get the meteors in to actually throw out their opponent. And honestly, so much of the map has been taken by the south side. And so much of the map is easily taken by the south side and has yet to be taken. Because again, the south side seemed to not really want to take infrastructure when they had the chance. That south team could easily have 400 metal per second with the territory they currently have under their control. Like, this entire section here, no. It, there's plenty of metal extractors. So, that's kinda it. The South Team ultimately winning 60,000 extra on the attrition, too. But yeah, South Team ultimately taking this game. That is just it. The North Team... Wow, okay, sheesh. Finish line holding on to the bitter end. They really want the Zenith. That Zenith is not going to happen. I mean, the Paladin's trying. I'll give it that. The Fleas. Fleas are going to be too much of a problem. Fleas should be able to get rid of the Zenith. Get rid of the Paladin. Get rid of the Finish Lines. Command. No, maybe not the Command. The Command actually is going to have no problem. But get, do get rid of the Zenith. Stop the Zenith production. And that seriously should be it. Finish Line Commander losing their. Or finish Line losing their Commander. Two Fleas. Paladin to everything else. Like, really, it's just break Finish Line. That's all you got to do. And there it is. Finish Line. They are done. They figure there's no way back in this. And... Wait, what? Okay, a bit of a bug here. <laughs>
Both Gene and Tonic and Finish Line want out, but for whatever reason, it's counting as three. So, yeah, they can't. They'd have to individually resign to be able to get out of this. <laughs> Only 23 minutes, yeah. No, it's done. It's done. It's over. Gene and Tonic, just hit that yes button if you haven't already, which I think you had. So, I don't understand why... Why does it say you need more votes? <laughs> yeah, you don't have 23 minutes. You have, like, one, maybe? Oh, yeah, and the, the Advanced Geo Plant is going to fall pretty soon, too. I, mean, I think this is going to just end with the Advanced Geo Plant winning. Or, sorry, Advanced Geo Plant dying. There's the death! No, Gunship Plant's actually going to be the last thing to go down. And there it is! It's just straightforward slaughter, having to wipe out everything. But yeah, overall, that was, that was a game. That was a requested game. If you're wondering why are we doing Lobster Game, it's because it was a request, and again, I do those requests every once in a while. I will not be doing another Lobster Game for at least a couple months, though. It's just, it's a very occasional thing. But yeah, Big Bertha. The MVP of the match is the Big Bertha. Yeah, I can't quit getting focus, wait, right. Damn it, I wrote this autofocus. I should be able to get it, no problem. Anyway, yeah, MVP of the match, Big Bertha. Ah, come on. But yeah, Big Birth was the thing that made the... There we go. That looks good. That was the thing that made the blue team take the game. The Big Bertha. That was basically it. I mean, I guess Detriment was also kind of handy, but as a tool to reclaim into more damage. But yeah, the Big Bertha massively opened up everything on the northern side to allow the blue team to just wipe out everything. Ultimately, once this western side was taken out, nothing else really mattered. So yeah, that was that. That was quite the long game. Actually, the north side had an army advantage the entire time. South side had no well, no excess. North side had some of the variant. North side had a much better reclaim, but south side had far better overdrive. Overall, though, metal income fairly even. Metal use fairly even. Army value was just south side basically won off of the Bertha. They got the big Bertha, and then everything just fell apart for the northern team. Yeah, so, okay. Coming from the person who has notably and pathologically had a very difficult time getting artillery into the game plan, I do appreciate this. It's hard for me to do it, to remember to do it, but boy is it ever effective when it happens. Anyhow, it's not even big. It's, it's huge. Like, the Big Bertha. People saying Twitch chat, the Big Bertha's not big. It's like, the Big Bertha's big. Look, there's the Big Bertha. There's the Cerberus. It's like, look how much bigger it is. Like, the boar has got to be, like, a meter. I mean, I can't... Not anything to really compare it to, but seriously, this is a giant boar. With... It's a giant cannon compared to literally everything else. Like... No, Dante's don't stand up to this thing. Not even paladins don't stand up to this thing. It's big. Don't you go tell me this is not big. It's big. It's big. It is a big gun. And no, I'm not going to play that song. It's copyright. But, yes. It is a big gun. Anyhow, like I said, we're going to be moving on to another game. It is going to be a match between... Let's see, the 3v3 I just got a request on before I started the stream. So yeah, it's going to be on Comic Catcher. It's going to be Hokumoko Mana 12 Maj versus Northland G. Segaro on Topcac. That is going to be up in... <laughs> Topcac with a very strange emphasis. That's going to be up in a couple minutes. So yes, we're going to have a longer stream today because I... Literally have nothing to do until late this evening. And also, I felt like last week was a little bit iffy and YouTube just in tournament for a while. So, yeah. So, yeah. We're going to have one more match. It's going to be a 3v3. And then that'll be it. So, stay tuned. Be back in a minute or two. <laughs> 